So I'm gonna do one half of my hair with the Rev Air 2 and the other half with my Revlon blow dryer. I love both of these blow dryers so much, but I'm just really curious to see which one works better for my hair. The price variation between these two dryers is so drastic. So the first blow dryer that I'm gonna use is my old faithful Revlon blow dryer. I have been using this tool for about five years now and or maybe longer than five years actually and it still works really really good i mean i've never had any problems with this i love this blow dryer so much and it's only 40 dollars. you can find these on amazon and i will leave the link down in the description bar below my hair is freshly washed conditioned and deep conditioned and i don't have anything on my hair i'm not going to use any um like blowout creams or nothing like that because i just want to see how the products work on their own so i'm just going to part my hair down the middle Okay, and I'm gonna clip this side out of the way. I'm gonna do six sections, so. The Revlon blow dryer only has three settings, low, high, and cool. So I'm gonna use this on the low setting. That's the one that I use all the time. And I'm just gonna braid it out of the way and go on to the next section. And repeat. All right, so this half is done. Okay, so now I am ready for the Rev Air. And I'm just gonna do the same to this side, take three sections and dry my hair. I'm gonna spray this side with a little water because it has been quite a minute now and it's starting to get a little dry. And I'm also going to comb through it really quickly. Which my hair is still pretty detangled. All right, now the Rev Air is a completely different machine. So there are three settings on here as well, but these settings control the amount of heat that the machine is giving. And then, this thing is so fucking big. So for the Rev Air, you just have to turn the machine on. And then on the other side, you set what type of tension you want the machine to have. So the way that this works is it like sucks your hair into the machine and you can change the settings from like one to seven. One is like the least amount of tension and seven is the most amount of tension. So the tighter your hair is, you might want to turn up the settings a little higher. However, I like to still use it on a low setting and it still works pretty good for me. So I'm gonna use it on a low heat. I'm gonna put this on a number three three yeah so i'm going to put this on a number three and then i'm going to use it on the low heat setting Okay, so I was not expecting this. 
Let me just start taking these braids down. Major takeaways, there is a huge difference in the application of both of these blow dryers. With the Revlon blow dryer, you have to really take your time starting at the end and comb your hair going up the shaft of your hair to make sure you don't get any snags and tangles, which I did experience a few, not a whole lot, but a few. And then on the other hand, the Rev Air kind of does all the work for you. I experience zero, zero, zero snags, zero tangles. So to me, the Rev Air worked a lot faster than the Revlon, and it was just so much easier. It's like with the Revlon, you have to like keep on combing it through your hair. With the Rev Air, you just kind of sit there and hold it. The Revlon is way easier to set up. All you have to do is plug it in and you can start using it. Whereas the Rev Air has like a lot of pieces. It's heavy, it's clunky, especially the base of the machine. So you have to keep that in mind, but I just keep my Rev Air all connected and I just put it on my little beauty corner area and it just stays there. So I don't have to set it up and take it down every time that I need to use it. So final results. So there is a huge difference in the texture of my hair. With the Rev Air, my hair has more of like a crinkly texture throughout my hair, which I think is kind of cute. I mean, this, this side is more like a puffy texture, but it's all really straight. The Revlon side feels like it has like way more volume. My hair feels super, super thick. And on this side, my hair feels like a little bit thinner and like smoother. I mean, you can even see the difference. Like with the Revlon, I have way more volume and fluff and the Rev Air gives me like this interesting kind of crinkly texture, but it's smoother and it's just like a little flatter. So I guess I can show you guys the back of my hair. I wasn't expecting to love the Rev Air as much as I do because the Revlon has been my OG for many, many years. But the Rev Air, it just works so much better. The fact that there was not a single snag on my hair, not a single nap or nothing getting pulled, to me is worth the price. So let's just talk about price for a second. The Revlon is about $40 and the Rev Air is about $400 or $495. It's ridiculous. It's very expensive, but for somebody who blow dries their own hair frequently, you can't pay for healthy hair. And to me, it's worth the investment because I'll have this tool for many years in the future and my hair will just continue to be very well taken care of. So to, for me, that justifies the price. And as far as results, I really like the results of both. I guess it depends on what kind of style I was going for. Both of these could easily be flat ironed. Both of these, I could do a braid out, a twist out or whatever. As far as like the texture of my hair, I like both. I really think that the Rev Air is interesting though because I only use it on um, the tension number three and it goes all the way up to seven. And a lot of naturals use it at the higher settings. Um, I just don't because I don't see the point. Either I'm gonna do a braid out or I'm gonna flat iron my hair after this anyway. So to me, it's just more so about just getting it dry and getting it blown out. If you are thinking about buying the Rev Air, it is an expensive tool but it is worth the investment. If you are looking to make a purchasing decision, I'm gonna say go ahead and spend that money on that Rev Air Sis because don't sacrifice the health of your hair for the price of the tools. When you invest in expensive hair styling tools, it's gonna keep your hair healthy over time. And just think about how long you keep your flat irons, your blow dryers, your curling irons, you keep them forever. So it's well worth the investment if you do your hair a lot. If you don't do your own hair a lot, then you might just want to roll with that $40 Revlon because it does still work. But um, the Rev Air, 
it's just I'm flowy I'm more flowy this one is more like poofy I don't know they're both cute though but yes out of the two which one do I think is better I'm gonna have to say the Rev Air 1000% just because of the ease of just I can like just sit here and it's drying my hair and also the fact that it's healthier for my hair with the Revlon it's like you're raking through your hair with this paddle brush and it's combing and blowing heat and wind on it where with the Rev Air it's just like gently even massaging my hair I don't know how to describe the Rev Air feels so good on your scalp it's like relaxing it's like a gentle tug that you feel on your scalp and it just feels amazing so I like that also my arms weren't as tired when I was doing my hair on this side the heat oh my god when I was using the Revlon it was just so hot even though I had it on the low setting I was just getting hot y'all and when you already trying to blow your hair out and your hair reverts when it's wet you don't want to be sweaty and hot while you're doing your hair so it's like this side I was just cooler calmer I wasn't sweating so that also plays a huge factor into why that Rev Air is the one for me. So if you have any questions about these tools, let me know in the comments and I will try my best to get back with you. I will leave the links for both of these products in the description below, which they are both amazing, amazing products. I hope this video was informative and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.